Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Philips PM6612 counter timer, 80 megahertz, 100 nanoseconds. And I think this is uh, probably from the start of the 90s or end of the 80s. Uh, I just bought this at a local auction for less than two dollars and the reason is of course quite obvious it is missing the top and the bottom outer chassis as you can see here the top and bottom lids but the reason i got this one is of course it got this fantastic main oscillator i think this is an oven and the other reason I got this one is this was the model they used at the school at my first education for training, um, fixing and repair and understand uh, features and faults and all that kind of stuff. So I should be able to probably fix it if it isn't working. If only I kept all my books, uh, but it's... Uh, 30 years old ago so I didn't find any um, leak capacitors it's still looking quite nice and uh, beautiful see look at that all nice and uh, pretty so I will just go and uh, power it up and see what happens when you buy stuff with uh, missing lids or missing chassis parts i do that quite often by the way so um it tells me some something about what to expect so i definitely expect this one to be defect so let's try and see maybe i should dim the light a little bit because the vacuum fluorescent is not super bright so mains is on and it is already using 12 watts of idle and i think the reason is uh mains transformer is probably running he he and then it goes to 18 and we got okay um all the left i don't know if that is let me see if that is easy to see here at the very front can you see all the left digits they're a little bit dimmer so now we are in frequency one second reset sensitivity i don't know exactly why isn't it i mean if it is it in frequency aha so there is a problem problem with the see there's no gate Start, stop, should be able to, to gate, right? and if I push these two, there's also a, uh -huh, so there's probably a problem with main time base or something like that, but I mean I'm quite happy at least we got light in the VFDs. Yeah, I'll play a little bit more with this and see what happens. Before I start measuring anything, I mean, we got a, a switch here at the back. It says internal standard or external via input Z. That's that one. And uh, what is that? Mains or external battery so it can run on a battery B input. And that will be the standard output. I could also just measure the frequency stand out right there it still didn't work with uh, an input the standard input but the standard output i can connect to my oscilloscope and then we can see here we got 10 megahertz of uh, oscillator for, so the main oscillator is running and it is definitely an oven because it's getting really nice and warm and now the power consumption is much less. It's 8 watts when it's turned on 
and it is only four watt three and a half when it's off so that is the oven that is now nice and warm and is stable so we have some problems with the gating one of the most important things we learned when we studied this uh, unit that was to do a proper front plate test and survey and come up with some good ideas of what is working and what is not working even things that works tell us not to waste time in different uh, parts of the circuit and see here's a count mode and then the count mode a we just input a signal this is one kilohertz on a and then it's just counting this and in this mode it is not using any of the gating or the time bases or anything like that so since this works and the sensitivity also works see that tells me the input stage and all that input things that goes and make this input analog signal into a digital countable signal and also all the counters and all that works so that is really really good news so um, after I found the problem is of course in the time base and we got some really really special parts in the time base the rest here is just normal TTL gates and all that kind of stuff but here we got some really really special counter dividers um, chips and they're called GZF1201P and um, I believe it's a 4-bit programmable counter but they're also very very fast and there is a reason why they use them both in the time base but definitely also in the input stage of the main counter and um, the fun thing is one of them don't work and uh, it was the first of the time based chips that is uh, that was not working maybe you can see the numbers i've been read uh, yeah i wrote some numbers on them here that's because i swapped the chips from the frequency counter to the time base and with the chips in the time base look at that now we got a time base that is working we got a gate signal I also believe we got variable holding time I am this memory feature will show you the memory as it counts So all that works too. And of course, we got some digits some missing because one of the chips is defect. And we can go back to the counter mode, see? Counting, 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 and then it's not counting the rest of the stuff because I swapped the chips. And that was the mode that was working and this proved those two chips that were working. So it's uh, quite simple the way I could figure this out the problem is I can't even find the data sheets for those chips and uh, without the data sheets well I can sort of guess what they do and then um, I mean I'm not able to restore the time base without uh, exactly those uh, chips I mean otherwise I'm gonna use 10 different chips to uh, restore the time base operation here that is uh, not exactly what I wanted to do I just really want to show you how I figured this out by looking at um, first the block diagram to figure out about the input stages and the counter stages the time bases and also by looking at the front what was working and what was not working and uh, yes to figure that out quite simple uh, also this this uh, counter here is just amazingly fantastic uh, nicely designed there's a little switch mode converter here and this generates all the different voltages I believe it can also run in on a single voltage external voltage using those uh, connectors right here and that is why there is a little internal switch mode converter here it runs on quite a lot of different voltages the 
the plus 120 and minus 50. That is, of course, for the VFD, the multiplexing of this vacuum fluorescent display. I think there's a little temperature sensor there as well. You can pull this and this way disconnect all the different voltages and you can input uh, other voltages or you can input uh, amp meters and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's definitely designed uh, to be service friendly. Just to show you the bottom side of this, there's plenty of room here for some sort of a BCD storage interface or something like that. At least it says BCD uh, here on the rear. So I believe that is the idea with that plug-in uh, module. Have a look here at the temperatures. It's quite clear. This is a temperature controlled regulated oven oscillator. It is here on the outside, it's 36, 40 Celsius. <laughs> it's quite funny. And that is what makes this oscillator super stable. That is because it heats this up uh, so that the internal parts is regulated at a constant temperature, no matter what the ambient temperature changes will be, right? And here we got the type number of this fantastic oscillator. I think I will maybe save the entire unit um, because I think the I have seen those um, special chips in other Philips counters and sometimes I get Philips counters I cannot repair or save and that means I will probably be able to get those ICs uh, in a near future. Also I believe this unit was initially, as you can see here, with this uh, oven, because it says here, including this option. Normally it's just a tiny little plug-in oscillator and not this big, nice one. So I believe still, it was a pretty good score for less than $2 and I'm still a little bit happy about it, but... I was able to find a lot of information about those um, chips from another Philips counter. Of course, they're using those chips in all their counters. And they're actually a full five digit frequency counter and multiplexer, divider, latches, and uh, BCD output. And I mean, everything in one chip but only for five digits. So that is why we need two of them to handle the digits we got here. As you can, I don't know if this is easy to see, all right? But that is why we need those two chips. And that is why, as you can see here, one of them got some broken bits. And that is uh, quite visual here on the display. So. Before I find some sort of a donor for this fantastic chip, I should of course show you a little bit of snips from the, from the data sheets or from the data documentation I found. And you'll see how complex they are. And they are of course a very useful to handle the entire time base with all the different um, timing settings um, yeah so that is uh, all i wanted to show you about this fantastic frequency counter so thank you very much for watching and please come again another day bye bye